bug stuck in there. Yeah, I got a little bug juice on there. Uh, just weathering, right? All right, hey guys, welcome back. I got a new project. This week, I'm gonna be going back to some Back to the Future props. I'm gonna be putting together Biff Tannen's cane from Back to the Future. I saw this online and I thought this was a great idea, so I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna do this. So far, I have the prints done. I printed out a lot of hands for this one. This is the original file that I got, and this is the 100% printout. As you can see, it's huge. It's the size of my hand. So then what I did is I did a bunch of other prints, different sizes, at different scales. That's what I have right now, to figure out the right size. So I did 190, 80, 70, 5, and 70. What I ended up doing is I ended up going with 75 because I thought this one looked and felt about the right size. What I did to modify it is you can kind of see that how big these ridges are. I didn't really like that too much, so I changed those a bit. And as you can see, it is empty on the back. Online, I found this, this prop archive book that actually revealed something I didn't know about when I watched the original films. I've seen the movies a hundred times, but on the back of the hand, actually has engraved into the hand, Biff H. Tannen. And that's what it says from the actual prop that was actually, that was actually in the movie. The actual prop that was used actually has his name engraved in it. Now I've seen the movie a hundred times. I've never noticed this before. So I was super excited to find out that little fun little detail that I never knew of before. And then I printed it out. Now the original file, uh, I think the file looks great. The original file though is a little, uh, wonky if you're gonna print it. It's split here on the first print that I did. The inside of the, the fist actually has a hole in it, so that caused this, this slice to happen halfway through the print. So there's a bubble inside. I put it into Blender and I ended up filling in the, the fist so it's fully solid. It's, this was the original version, and this is what I have it now as. It's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit more of a, a steep step instead of less steep. This is actually sitting at about one inch. And also this entire piece right here is completely new to the original file. I think it looks pretty great. It's a nice tight fit too. I can glue it in there and it will never come, come out. I think the engraving comes out really nice. It's only lowered maybe like maybe 32, 32, one thirty second of an inch maybe. But it's just enough to get some some rub and buff in there. I'm printing out the cane tip also, which I think just finished. Hopefully that fits. Let's go, I'm gonna look at that right. All right, it looks, it looks like it should fit. It might fit, I don't know. It only took a couple of hours to print. Also, I made the cane tip with a hole in the top. So I can put a dowel in that and then hopefully get a nice centered uh, hole on the end of this dowel and I can shove it right in and it should have a nice tight fit to that also. Hopefully, I'm gonna end up making this more brass than gold. If you find the replica online, it does have it as a gold fist, but in the film, it's actually a brass fist. So I'm gonna make one, the full length cane, and which is 36 and a half inches long from the top of the fist to the bottom of the tip of the cane, and one, the broken one that Doc Brown finds in the DeLorean. And hopefully, as like, a bonus, you have to stay till the end of the video to find out what the bonus is. This is what I've decided to do, is I've decided to paint the fists black, with a gloss black, and over that do a light coating of a metallic gold, and then I'm gonna put the liquid leaf on top of that, and it should end up looking more like this right here and less more like that. It's, it's not a big difference, but like that has more black in it and this side looks a bit more brassish. And I did some, some research on my cane again, and I realized that I actually made the, the tip too long. So what I did is I just kind of, I just kind of took it on the bandsaw, well on the, not the bandsaw, but the table saw, and just kind of cut off a little bit of it. So it's now, uh, it was this long, now it's this long. Even though it's a little bit smaller, it should still be fine, it'll still fit. I'm gonna paint this the same way that I'm gonna paint the, the fists as well, but this part's gonna go in the bottom. I got my black, these are all dried and nice secured. I think what my plan is right now, I'm gonna give it a light coat of the antique gold. I know I want this to be brass, but this is sort of brass looking, it's antique gold. Then I'm gonna go over with a stippling, like how I did the rub and buff before, how I just take the chip brush, 
dunk it in and just kind of like stipple all over the place. That's what I'm going to do with the liquid gold, the uh, liquid leaf. That's the plan at this point. Here we go. So then I took the, the chip brush and I put the gold leaf on top of the uh, uh, antique gold. But then I kind of thought, I know in the, in the prop, the very tip of this uh, coupler that goes onto the cane is actually a lot shinier. So I just kind of took the antique gold and put that right on there. Just to kind of see what that sort of looks like. Kind of separates a little bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna cover the whole thing up in it because there's not really that big of a difference. Definitely gives it a nice look to it though. If you do some layers on these, it gives it like different patches and different areas shine a little bit better than other parts of it. Some dimension in the piece. A little risky because I did, I did a little test. This area, it's all covered with a clear, a clear coat. That kind of interest, that kind of pattern is kind of cool. It looks like it reacts funny with the liquid leaf, so, but I want to give it a shot. If anything, I can just paint over it. All right, cool, look at that. I'm digging this, this is great. Got a bug stuck in there. Let's get you out of there, buggy. There we go, bug's out. Yeah, I got a little bug juice on there. Uh, just weathering, All right? Leave it alone for a little bit. Make sure it's nice and dry and we'll come back and then see and see what next we have to do. Cause I'm pretty sure at this point, we're in a good position to start with the cane. Okay, so I brought this up earlier in the video, but I was kind of quick about it. The true size of the cane that you want to make is 36.5 inches. The replica you can buy online, the gold one, is only 36 inches. So if you're a stickler like I am, you're going to want that extra 0.5 inch. You can see that the depth of the handle, how far in the dowel will go into the handle, is only one inch. To chop the cane in two and make it look more like it's been broken in half manually instead of with like a saw or something, I chose to go with a bit of a more of a caveman approach to this. And I chose to just use some chisels and just slowly break it in two. And what that ended up giving is it gave it more of a look on the inside of that it was probably snapped in half instead of something that was just sawed cleanly in two. The replica you can buy online also gives more of a manufactured look to it, so it doesn't look as truly like worn and broken as it probably should be. It's good, I like how that looks. I'm gonna leave this finish in here because you know, it's a cane. This is probably what it was made of and I like, I like that what it looks like. Um, this top section looks really great. In the movie, he holds it kind of like this, right? So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it. I don't know exactly how long it is. So I like it like that long. And I like it like this long. Well, maybe it's this long. Maybe I like it more this, uh, maybe? Split the difference maybe, right in the middle. Maybe I'll do that, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down. Seven and a half. Seven, seven and a half. Seven and a quarter. Uh, I should probably check to see that actual size first real quick. Okay. It doesn't really tell you how long it is. It just says it's one to one scale replica. That's fine. So the, the, the reference that I found does not have the actual size, but I like how it looks. So I'm gonna split the difference. I'm gonna go right between the two marks that I had, the original mark that I thought looked right and the current mark that I like now. So I'm gonna cut it right in the middle. Just so if I, if I want to, I can always go a little bit shorter. Yeah, okay, we're doing it. I wanna make sure that I cut on the outside of the line so I don't go into where I'm gonna go. I think this looks pretty good. It may be a little bit short, but I'm kind of, ha I'm okay with it right now. This is, this is, it feels right in my hand. So I'm happy with it. I really like this at the bottom. Cause the, the replica you can buy online, it's red under here and it looks weird. So that's why I didn't want to go with that. All right. I've decided to make some changes now. 
So because I got this done yesterday, and I was pretty happy with it at the time, but I did some thinking overnight, I started to not like how I'm coloring this, and I don't like how shiny this, this staff is. And I thought it would be cool, but it's turning out to look kind of weird with all this texture on the cane. So I'm gonna end up taking this out and replacing it. I've already started to do that. What I've done already is I've taken this middle, the thickness of this wall right here, and I've taken it down, it is one eighth. I've now taken it down to one sixteenth of an inch. And this is just by like putting a little sanding bit on my drill and just going to town on it. Yep, this is one, one sixteenth of an inch. So, so what I'm gonna do with this is now that this is thinner, I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna actually put my original dowel that I had because I bought two dowels. The black one is seven eighths of an inch. This one originally I bought, this is one, one inch. Now this will fit fully onto the cane. It's real tight because I had to basically sand out the inside of the hand and then I had to sand the top, this top area of the, the cane. One looks better, I think. I think this one looks better. It's a little thinner, but it's still, I printed it in resin, so it's still okay. It's not like flexing at all, so it should be able to, should hold pretty well, and it still goes an inch into the hand, so it's a good hold on both of these. So I'm gonna go with this one now. Um, so so that, that does mean that I'm gonna have to repaint the cane again. I didn't record this part, but I'm gonna record the next part so you can see uh, what I had to go through to sand down both of these pieces. Um, I also still have the tip. The tip should fit fine at the end here still, so this is still gonna go on the tip here. This feels better in my hand too. This feels good, this feels nice. I'm gonna show you how I did it now. So without any further ado, here comes the time lapse. going good. I got this other piece that I'm going to uh, cut down like I did before with the chisel and the mallet. There we go. <sighs> this is the fist that I have right now. This is uh, basically what both of them look like right now. Uh, though I'm not really happy with this color. I don't like this color combination between the, the gold looking here and the, the antique here. Uh, so what I did is I went to go find some enamel paints and I got some thinner and I've thinned up some, some paint for the airbrush. Hopefully it doesn't destroy my airbrush. And I found a brass, a brass color. Already, it does kind of look a little bit different. The shine's a little bit different. So I got a full, full jar of paint in here, plus some thinner. I'm hoping it's gonna look good. It should look better than it does right now. So. To thin the enamel paint, all I used was some lacquer thinner and the paint and did a one-to-one -one ratio between the thinner and the paint. For this section, I actually added a little bit of copper to the mix. That, that bottle was just copper right there. I just added a little bit of copper to it and then went back over it with a brass, just to kind of see if I could get some kind of sort of variation with the texture on there. Uh, but it turned out looking really great. All right. So this one's the one that I painted in brass. I put a little bit of, I put like, just a smidgen of copper on top of it also, but it's mostly brass. Um, I just kind of filled up the the hopper and just just covered it in the brass. I think it looks really nice. This is really uh, shiny. It looks super shiny in the camera too. It's nice and shiny. It looks more like an actual casted brass piece with this now, opposed to this one that looks more, I don't know. I don't think it looks as good. It 
looks weird. This one has more of a reddish hue to it. Yeah, you can kind of tell there. Yeah, that looks good. Wow, that's way shinier. Yeah, that's way shinier, okay. I just painted all the way down to the coupler also, so I'm gonna paint the whole thing on this one too. All right, this is looking great so far. Well, I've gotten it all painted bronze. This looks super bronze. The other one looks just as good. You can see there's, it's especially on this one, you can see the kind of the texture that makes it look a little bit more like it's a cast metal mold than, and then cast in bronze. The original print was very smooth. It is cool that I was able to retain some of that information. At this point, I've actually sanded down the tip of the cane a little bit so it matches up with the size of the little pointy part. So it's pretty close. I like how, I like that, that's good. Just gonna paint it. Time to paint, again. What I did is I kind of banged up the cane a little bit because you know, in the movies, uh, Biff's always hitting stuff, hitting people with his cane all the time. So I figured, you know what, he's probably hit and nicked it up a little bit. So I've actually added some nicks and dings and stuff of a lifelong life of the cane. I've done the same thing to the short one also. They're not like gouging out the cane or anything like that. You know, he's just kind of like banging someone in the head with it from time to time. Okay, now I'm gonna be putting the shaft into the cane knocker with just some simple E6000 and some CA glue, just making sure it's cemented in there really nicely and just kinda of push it right in. Okay, so I had a bit of a boo-boo, made a little boo-boo, made an accident, had a, had a mistake happen. This one that I have here, this other, the cane one, was a little looser, so air was able to get out of it easily. Uh, when I was putting the, the stick into the uh, fist. The issue with this one is that I didn't make this one as loose. This one's pretty nice and snug. So when I was putting it in, there's so much air, there's, there was like a pocket of air that was stuck in there. So when I pushed it in even harder, I felt like it was gonna happen too. It broke, so <laughs> it just broke. You can kind of see it's cracked right there. Uh, luckily, it just broke into two pieces. A little bit of it there, a little bit of it there. I'm kind of gonna go with it. Since this is the broken cane, this is just weathering at this point, really. That's just what it is. It goes all the way across to the front. Yeah, you can see it right in the front there too. A little bit of a hairline fracture right there too. So that was the only parts that came off just to release that air bubble. I may drill into this a little bit. Should I? Because I don't want to lose the amount of tight fitting feature from this. So I may just like drill into this a little bit at an angle, get like a little hole pop out the side so I can at least have some air come through while I'm pressing it in. So it's a nice, nice, nice fit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give a final coat of brass just to kind of clean up this area right in here. I mean, I don't hate it, but I wanna clean it up just a little bit and just kind of get all the, that resin, that gray resin inside that you can see in the cracks, a little cleaned up. This one's totally finished. I got the front, I got the tip. It goes really good in the hands too. If you do actually get these replica pieces, you'll get a slightly altered version of these Canes. For both of these, I'm gonna try to make a box. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a box around both of these. I'm gonna make put them inside of a box. So that's gonna be in a short later. Uh, I gotta gotta find the material for that first. Uh, but yeah, I got these two done. They look fantastic. I'm very happy with them. I think they look pretty successful. I think this is the broken one still, and it actually is very broken. So that's kind of adds to the aesthetic, I think. In the movie, I think you only ever see like 
like this and you only see the other side of it a little bit. You don't see the inside too much. So I kind of made, kind of made some, uh, created some story there. So I got this guy, this is the short broken one. And then I got the, the long cane. This feels really good in my hands. I can put it down. It feels, feels nice. Uh, you know, you can hit people with it too. You can like, I'm not gonna be using it for that. I'm gonna display it. I'm gonna try to put together a box, a container for this to put it in, to store. And, uh, but I think this looks pretty great. This is, feels good in my hand. Thank you so much for watching this. Definitely do like and subscribe to this video and uh, I'll see you guys real soon in the next one. This was a great, this was a good build. I'm really happy with this. Look at that. Yeah. Click the little bell in the corner there so you can see when I put out new videos. Should be a new one coming out soon. Got a couple of big projects coming up too. So very excited about that. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.